Hello everyone, it's Whisper Audios, and welcome back to another monthly favourites video. This is May 2022, and like always, um, I will link the playlist for all the monthly favourites up here and down in the description, should you have missed any from this year and previous years. I try to do them every month and we're on a roll. I can't believe that we're already in May and I've done a monthly favourites every single month. I've been so consistent this year. Fingers crossed that I keep it up. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen so um, I'll just try and keep making these every month um, as long as I can <laughs> until something pops up. So this month um, of course, I'll be sharing my favourite song, ASM artist, thing, cosmetic, book. I think that's how it goes. You know, I've been doing this so many years now, and you'd think I would remember the order. But for the life of me, I never do. <laughs> so uh, let's jump in right away. I still haven't had that many um, songs to enjoy this month, um, <laughs> apart from stupid, like, little TikTok, like, sounds that, and songs that get stuck in my head, like the uh, Louis Theroux rap, you know, the one that goes, um, <laughs> I like the way you jiggle jiggle, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I literally had that in my head for about two weeks. It's only just gotten out of it, but I wouldn't class that as a song. And also, like, the Jeff Bezos song um, that goes, um, CEO entrepreneur, born in 1964, <laughs> you know that one? <laughs> I had that in my head as well. So I'm not going to count those as songs, even though, yeah, they're fun and funny. There is one that I uh, came across on TikTok. <laughs> Bloody TikTok takes up my whole life at the moment. <laughs> the original I really love. It's one of my favourite songs. Um, but it's by a different artist. It's a cover. And that song is Madonna, Like a Prayer. And it's actually covered by Miley Cyrus. And it's the live one where she's singing it live. And uh, I saw a TikTok of a woman reacting to the video of Miley singing this live and I was like totally the same as her because, I mean, I only know Miley Cyrus from like the Disney Channel like way back when and I know she has like a really prominent music career now but I really don't follow her music or really listen to it but this song made me realise what a wonderful and unique singer she was. Like, I had no idea. I'm very naive in that way. But she has this, like, really gravelly, um, rough, low voice. And mixed with that song, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. It really gave me all the feels. And I love uh, Like a Prayer by Madonna. It's one of my favourite songs of hers. And when, like, Miley was singing it, I was like, this is sounding so much better. <laughs> like, as much as I love the original, it gave it that really rawness to it, um, which I found was amazing. She's a real showman as well, like, she can command the audience really well, and I, I really loved watching her performance of it too, um, and I really, really love that. <laughs> Whenever I'm feeling a little bit low, I put that on and it makes me feel like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> so now we move on to favourite TV slash film. And this month I'm playing catch up to all of the TV shows that have been coming out. Like, I'm currently watching the last season of Ozark. Haven't watched Moon Knight yet, but I want to watch that after Ozark. I don't like to watch like two TV shows at the same time. I find it's really confusing and I really like to give my attention to just one show at a time so I can truly, truly take it in. 
And I think I said this um, on another monthly favourites video that I watch one episode a week. I don't binge watch TV shows. Um, I like to sort of um, space it out like it, it would have been back when I was a teenager and uh, you had like a show on every week and that was it with commercial breaks. <laughs> The adrenaline rush of coming back from the loo and uh, it's starting already and like run <laughs> kids these days will never know <laughs> so the tv show that i watched i actually watched um oh my god it must have been like last year the end of last year and it's one of these tv shows that um i don't see talked about a lot um but honestly it's phenomenal it's Amazing. Like the premise is amazing, production design is amazing, acting, story, it's amazing. <laughs> I need to get a new actor. <laughs> but I think it's because um, it's on Apple TV and I probably think not a lot of people sign up to that. I mean, I personally wouldn't have. I got a free um, 12 months when I upgraded my phone. So that's the only reason why I watched this show in the first place, because I had a free subscription, um, which I've actually cancelled now because uh, there's really nothing on Apple TV that really jumps out at me. Um, and if it wasn't for um, Servants, I think, um, I would have just cancelled my subscription when I'd finished this show that I'm talking about now. So uh, yeah, those are the only two shows that are on there. And the show, which I haven't mentioned yet, is For All Mankind. And the basic premise of this TV show is what if the Russians beat the Americans to the lunar landing? So what would have happened if the Russians landed on the moon first? So that's the basic setup, and what I didn't realise about this show was how historically accurate it was. Except for the fact that the Russians landed on the moon first, but all like the uh, lunar uh, landing information, all of the Russian um, like pe people that were involved in it. Uh, all the events that took place in the space of the years that they developed the lunar landing um, crafts and actually went to the moon and beyond um, and all their plans for the future as well it's all kind of based on real life facts which I didn't know <laughs> um, so I thought it was a really interesting look into kind of like the psyche um, of how like the Americans would have acted if the Russians got there before them. And pretty much, as you can imagine, it's like this really intense space race. Like, once they went to the moon, um, the Americans finally eventually land on the moon in the TV show. They they don't stop there. They want to, like, colonise the moon, and it's a it's a battle between the Americans and the Russians to um, put a base on the moon um, and where we've kind of left it. I try not to do any spoilers, actually. <laughs> well, let's just say that the moon is only the first stop on the space race. So it's really interesting because not only have you got, like, all these facts about space exploration and what it would entail sort of going to the moon and, and having a base on the moon and the conflicts that arise if somebody else was there like that's all really interesting but what I really loved about it was all the human drama because we follow the lives of like a handful of characters and you go on their journey over many many years so it takes place like over two decades I think season one season two um I think there's two seasons I'm not 100 percent 
Um, so anyway, you kind of really invest in these characters and their lives and their dramas and their mistakes that they make and really bad things that happen to them and what they have to go through. And, you know, there's some pretty shocking things that happen to these characters. And up until this point, you're just like, you know, they'll be fine. Like, these characters are invincible and they're not going to, like, get killed off. But that's what I love about this show. Like, no one is safe. Um, anybody can, like, snuff it <laughs> at any time. Um, and I think that's quite a brave, um, brave, like, narrative choice to do when, uh, you know, no character is safe. And I think most of the characters are actually based off of real life people. Obviously the names have been changed, but their actions and what they did and their position at NASA and stuff, um, it's all kind of based on, uh, on real people, which I really liked. Um, so you, it's kind of like a historical drama, but quite loose on the history. Like it's not like a history slash science lesson. Um, it takes liberties with it, but I, I really liked it. Um, so that is For All Mankind, and you can watch that on Apple TV. So next is my favourite ASM artist. Now, this particular ASM artist I have been enjoying for months, and her, her videos are so perfect, <laughs> because they are that really elegant blend of old school ASMR, um, but obviously with like um, a really lovely kind of like storyline and there's, there's so much thought and there's so much care taken to these, but it's not overly deliberate, it's very natural, um, very like cosy and comforting. And this particular ASM artist's voice is amazing. Like, I don't know what microphone she uses, but it captures her voice exquisitely. Like, every syllable, every word is so crisp. It's so... I don't know, it just sounds so nice. And it has... Her videos have, like, this very nice balance of white noise to them as well. Like in the, um, I guess, the old school kind of ASMR videos, which in my opinion capture ASMR the best when you've got a little bit of white noise, a little bit of background noise, and the, the voice is so crisp on the microphone. Like, I, I love those. And you don't see her face in any of these videos, it's all hands and um, explaining very, things very deliberately, again, very old school ASMR. Um, so this is why I really, really love her videos. Um, and what I also love about them is how consistent they are. So whenever she posts, you always know within a little what the theme's going to be, the, you know, the sound is going to be amazing, you know, the theme is going to be amazing, you know, it's going to be great. So the ASMR artist is called Amuse ASMR, and I'm going to show you one of her role plays, and it's called ASMR Spa Role Play Rose Treatment. Um, and I, I listen to this one in the background when I'm planning, because I feel like it has that very lovely pace to it. It's not hurried or rushed in any way. It's just lovely. So I'm going to play you a little bit from it. Complimentary Mother's Day special that we're having. No, no, you don't have to be a mom. Anyone is welcome. But we will be offering some special discounts for any moms who do come in and decide to come back at a later time and book another treatment with us. I'm just going to skip to well, the actual yes. treatment bit, which is really nice.
Okay, I realized that my, you could see my camera in that, but um, so you probably couldn't see the uh, video that well, but I'll link down in the description that particular video is honestly definitely worth a watch because it's just so relaxing and so cozy as well so that is a muse asmr okay so now we move on to my favorite thing which i have conveniently left at home today <laughs> i can't believe it i thought i was being so organized this morning i was like yes i got everything, I haven't forgotten every anything this morning, but I've forgotten it, so I'm going to be inserting some footage of the thing. So, this is Once Upon a Time, the storytelling card game, and essentially each player is dealt a handful of cards, and the idea is to tell a story as best as you can, using the cards that you are dealt. And the idea is that the first person to get rid of all their cards wins. So I'm going to show you the cards and very, very briefly how you play the game. I just want to show you the inside though of this box because it's so amazing. It just reminds me of like Brian Froud, the artist. It's so lovely and um, enchanting, I think. So each player is given an ending card. These are the ending cards. So you could receive any one of these. Each player is given just one. And the idea is to use the cards that you are given to get to the end so it makes sense <laughs> so you can get a really great one or you can get a really really hard difficult one so for instance this one is so the village was restored to prosperity kind of an easy one to get to <laughs> this one not so much the search revealed the stolen love token in his pavilion and he punished so that's quite a specific thing to get to so those are the ending cards you each get given one and then you are given these cards and there are a couple of different types this one is an aspect card so this is happy this is a thing card this one is poor so it could be any sort of thing, like a trinket, or a magical potion, or what have you. Oh, save that one for a minute. This one is an event, so breaking a vow, um, a celebration, you know, anything like that. This one is a character. This one is God. Could be princess, prince, uh, dragon, <laughs> anything like that. This one is a place. This is inside. You could get castle, palace, forest, anything like that. So you get dealt these cards. And these ones are called interrupt cards. And they could be on any of these different um, aspect cards. So this one allows you to interrupt the player that is having their turn. And you can only interrupt when somebody puts down the same colour. So if the person who is going, having their turn, puts down happy, you can say, ah, interrupt, and then carry on your story. You don't necessarily have to use this aspect. You can just interrupt and carry on. With your cards. So the cards that you are dealt are 11 minus the amount of players that there are. So for example, um, if you were playing with just two people, you would deal nine cards plus an ending card. 
So you'd have 10 cards in total. Here I have my nine different cards plus my ending card. So I have a squire, a bone, a horse, herald, garden, mouse, lazy, which is an interrupt card, dying, uh, dishonored, and my ending which I have to get to is, so she revealed her true identity and they were married. <laughs> so now I need to think, how on earth am I going to get <laughs> to that ending? And my opponent has the same. They have their own ending and they have a whole bunch of cards which they have to make a storyline out of. I could start once upon a time there lived a squire who had a magical horse and they lived in the garden of an enchanted uh, enchantress. Now, you'll notice that I am putting in words that aren't on the cards, so enchantress for example, and you can do that. You can actually um, beef out your storyline as much as you like, but just be aware that somebody in your um, somebody who your opponent is might have enchantress and therefore they can like interrupt you because they have that card even if they don't have interrupt that's the perk of the game so if for instance the other person had enchantress they could say ah enchantress and put it down and then they have the storyline now, when you're interrupted like that, either with an interrupt card or a specific story card, you have to pick up more cards, more of these cards. I think it's two. If you're interrupted, you pick up two cards. If you cannot go or cannot make sense of your story, you have to pick up one card. And the idea is to get rid of as many cards as possible before being interrupted. So the idea is to interrupt as much as possible the other person so you get the storyline back to you, but if you say for instance do interrupt, you have to remember what has come before. You cannot just disregard somebody else's story you have to remember where the storyline is going and fit it into your new narrative. And you could get interrupted many, many, many times by many different people, many different storylines. So you have to sort of adapt your story to what has gone before you and try to make it make sense to your ending card, which is really, really hard. So that's once upon a time. Next we move on to my favourite cosmetic and this TikTok made me buy. Now it's a cosmetic which um, is for your hair so we're talking about um, hair cleansing and hair styling products. Now I saw, I've seen everywhere on TikTok about the curly girl method. I don't know that if you've heard of that, but it's essentially bringing your hair back to its original like um, wave pattern or curl pattern. Um, and I realized from watching TikTok that I actually have wavy hair, like naturally wavy hair. Unfortunately, I realized this after I chopped off my hair. <laughs> So I haven't really made the full use of the curly girl method um, simply because my hair is still really short and uh, I, I don't necessarily like my curly hair when it's this short because I feel like I look like 
Annie. <laughs> and I just look like, just like bulbous hair. <laughs> and it doesn't suit me. So I'm kind of waiting for my hair to grow out a little bit to really um, make use of the curly girl method. But I bought some products that will help my styling whilst I have short hair. So I'm not doing the curly girl routine like religiously. I'm kind of taking aspects of it and incorporating it into my hair routine now. And I found that when I air dry my hair like this, it actually forms some really nice texture, not big curls or waves as like would have formed if I did it properly but it gives my hair that texture that is really nice and all I have to do is kind of like um get some straighteners on it which are not loud on the curly girl method but I have to break the rules because my hair looks definitely better when I like like curl some bits. So the products that I have been using to kind of achieve this texture um are by a company called Only Curls and I realised that my hair was protein overloaded, so you can, well it's getting a little bit better now, but it has that sort of dull, matte, like lacklustre look to it in natural daylight, and I realised that it had too much protein in it and it needed more moisture. So I found that I needed to add a better conditioner into my hair routine. I needed to stop using shampoo. As much as that terrified me, I was thinking like, oh my god, if I skip shampoo, my hair's going to get really greasy. If I just use like a, a co-wash, a conditioner wash, my hair's going to just look like an oil slick and, and all of these things. But I started using this um, co-wash by Only Curls. She matches my nails. How lovely is that? <laughs> so I started using this and I've been using this for about two weeks now and immediately I saw my hair improve. So I skipped shampoo and I used the co-wash to cleanse my hair. Now this is essentially a conditioner but with a little bit more cleansing properties in it so you have to really scrub your scalp. But after I washed my hair, my hair felt so moisturised and still really, really voluminous. I was like, what the hell? Like, how did, how does that work? And my ends felt really moisturised as well. Then I used uh, a conditioner by Faith in Nature. It's their jojoba oil conditioner. And I used the bowl method whereby you saturate your hair in a conditioner and then you dunk your head into the water and basically dunk and scrunch, dunk and scrunch, dunk and scrunch until the conditioner is kind of all washed out. This helps to retain the moisture in your hair and to form like wave clumps, which are like really big, um, like clumps of hair that stick together and that's your basis for your waves. Then once my hair is really soaking wet, I put this hydrating curl cream all over my head, like I saturate my hair in it and that helps to keep the waves defined in a soft way rather than like a crispy kind of way and also to like flatten down the hair um, shaft so it doesn't go frizzy. I also bought their microfiber towel so I could wrap my hair in um, something that won't make my hair go frizzy because my towels at home are really kind of starchy and hard and that causes frizz. So the microfiber towel by Only Curls um, not only dries your hair faster but it stops that frizz as well. So that's my like routine at the moment. Co-washing um, basically twice a week um, and then what I do after 
two co-washes. So after I've washed my hair twice, I will do a clarifying wash, which is basically a wash um, in apple cider vinegar and water. Sounds gross, but I put some like essential oils in there to make it smell not like a chip shop. <laughs> so that uh, balances out the pH levels in your hair. It strips out all of like the build up from these products because they will naturally build up. So I do a uh, apple cider vinegar rinse and then I also do an exfoliating scalp scrub as well. And this is really nice. I use, I've used this once already and it really, really cleanses your scalp. So if you have like oily hair or hair that's built up, this product will definitely like restart your hair again and really make it really voluminous. Like I used this scrub and I scrubbed my head and massaged my head for about three minutes and I have naturally like um, thick big hair but this made it even bigger and I was like oh my god how do I manage this so uh, if you're looking for voluminous hair then this is really really good so I will do the apple cider vinegar rinse and the scalp scrub every three washes and I find that just resets my hair back to um, you know that really nice fluffy um, clean feeling because with the co-wash, as much as it moisturises your hair, I feel like right into the roots, it's a little bit heavy. Not greasy or anything, like I've just done that, and normally my hair is really greasy and I feel like I need to wash it, but it's nothing. It's just really nice and moisturised. And this is like, my hair now is day two. And I've slept on it, I've brushed it, I've like combed it, I've straightened it and like played around with it and stuff. So I'm really happy with this because uh, I feel like I can not wash, I can wash my hair less now because I feel like this will last me another three days at least. I just have to be mindful of when I'm filming because I'll have to wash my hair the day before because I let it air dry and that's like the miracle of it. You can use these products and just let your hair dry because of the uh, properties of uh, reducing frizz. Um, I find that I have less frizzy hair now than what I would have done if I if I blow dried it and the texture is all like all still there. <laughs> so that um, is only curls and that's my favourite uh, cosmetic for this month. So finally we come on to my favourite book. Now if you follow my bookstagram which is the space between the lines you will uh, remember that I reviewed um, a couple of books by Alice Hoffman. Now you'll probably recognise that name because she wrote Practical Magic and Practical Magic is the film is one of my favourite films of all time. Now actually I watched this recently and I would say that it was one of my favourite films of all time. I used to watch it all the time as a kid when I was a kid I wanted to be a witch and it was just like a dream of mine to live in Salem and live in a house like um, uh, the Owens house and yeah I loved that film but I recently watched it again like about six months ago and I was like this film isn't as good as what I thought it was. Um, just simply because like you change and your values as an adult change and you see the world differently so it's not necessarily my favorite film anymore but I like the premise of it. So when I read the book I was expecting it to kind of live up to the film and be really great, um, full of magic and mystery and love and heartbreak and stuff and 
it was really disappointing. It, there was hardly any magic in it. It was all very depressing and all very like melodramatic. And I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't really like this book. But then I thought, you know, uh, Alice Hoffman has other books that follow along in the series. I'll give those a go. And they were okay. Like, they were all right. They were just, again, not that much magic in them. Like, it's all hinted at and it's all very real life. And I see where she's going with it. But, like, if you're going to write a book about witches, write a book about witches. <laughs> So when her newest book came out, which is actually a little bit old now, but um, I was like, I need to follow through with her work. I need to give her the benefit of the doubt and see if this book is any different. And thankfully it was. It gave me everything that I wanted from the storyline and more. So I was really, really pleased. And that is Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. Now, if you remember in Practical Magic, there is a curse on the Owens family. And basically, anyone who falls in love with an Owens woman is cursed. So, basically cursed to die. And this book is the origin of that curse and we follow the storyline of Maria Owens, the first witch of the Owens family. And we see how um, it all came to be. Now this book is set in the 15th century, so like 1674 and then it goes all the way to like... 1696. So we're in that sort of time where um, like the Americas were just being like colonized. Um, we start off in England, in Essex actually, where I'm from. There's a lot of witch stories around here. So we start off in Essex in England and then we sail across the ocean to America to like Massachusetts. We also spend a little time in Krakow, tropical island, and there is real magic in this, like curses, remedies, um, you know, strange things happening, familiars, wolves, animals that like are your friends, and oh, it's, it's really, really good. Um, again, it really plays on the themes of the previous books, but it um, has more like magic as at its focus and the origins of where the magic comes from and how you can sort of nurture it and, and stuff like that. So I really, really enjoyed it. And I think there is one more book um, to read of this, but I don't think the paperback comes out till the end of this year. Um, I can't remember the title. But I'm going to read that too when it comes out. So, Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman is my favourite book for May. So that brings us to the end of May's monthly favourites. And I really hope that you've enjoyed me rambling on again about all the things I've been enjoying this month. If you have any recommendations um, or suggestions for things, please do let me know because I'm always on the lookout for like different cosmetics, songs, TV shows, like anything that you can recommend, please do. So leave me a message in the comments. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care everyone.